Always nice to see a friendly face. What was that? Malawad! They found us! Run! Okay, so I think I made a calculation error. Uh, originally, I thought it would be really cool to do, like, every level of the game and do a video for each, and then I started to realize how long that's actually going to take to air. Uh, I thought that I'd be done around level 27 or 30, uh, but I'm already level, like, 33 as I record this, and, uh, I don't know when the end of the game is, so... It's probably going to take me way longer than I thought, and if I don't want these videos to still be airing in December, we're going to need to pick up the pace a little bit. So, we're going to do it in five level chunks, and then air them a few times a week, so we should be able to get there by the end. Also, there's a few levels where literally nothing happens, or it goes so fast that I didn't really even have footage of it. So, this is going to help out immensely. All right. As we start level 11, it turns out Malawan are dicks. Yep, that's basically all we need to know. Uh, Malawan's trying to have a corporate takeover of Reese's Atlas Corporation now that he's finally tried to get it back on its feet. And uh, they're doing it in the most hostile way possible. Never fear though, remember I have a giant mech, so that's good. I showed up at what is apparently a mission point well before the mission was actually activated and ended up just killing a lot of rats. Damn those motivational tapes that told me to expand my horizons. Yep, there's a chest I can't open because it's part of the mission, damn it. A doctor whose work is, well, let's face it, sketchy at best, said that I needed to go collect medical supplies and probably shake some people down in the process. People don't eat for days. It's a nightmare. Fine, but you're lucky I'm in a good mood. I decided to be a generous soul for the first time in this entire playthrough, returned to the cleared-out Ratch Den to actually use that box, and returned to amateur rap artist and occasional doctor, Ace Baron, who decided he was going to be generous too, and donate some of his blood. All I had to do was apparently take off his arm. I don't really think that was his plan, but it was mine. But hey, I got an additional award for being nice to that guy that time. And with that done, we could move from the outskirts to the Meridian Metroplex itself. I could only hope that soon I would meet my hero, Reese, in person, and maybe get his autograph. I was still using my glorified Super Soaker at this point, mostly so that I could take down shields effectively, but I started to think that this would not be adequate going forward. Luckily, I had picked up a Jacob's Assault Rifle, which functions more like a carbine, but it gets the job done. And the knife. Knife helps too. In fact, go ahead, bring a knife to a gunfight, you never know. I was then assaulted by the guys at the party who are just really into grilling, and threw rainbows at them. Finally, we had established a foothold for Atlas, and I could meet my hero. Unfortunately, he's currently a hologram. This was very disappointing. Never meet your heroes. Just a quick question. Who the hell is this, and how did you get on my secure line? Turns out that he is indeed a corporeal being, but this was a message that he needed to deliver remotely. He needed me to track down an Atlas operative, and I would absolutely do that. Right after I built my sweet new cyclone! Yeah, I like how the red meshes with my outfit. Okay. That's looking pretty sweet. Totally still planned on finding that operative, except that Lorelei needs coffee, and that is now a priority. I discovered what a robot thinks a barista is. Cool, cool, very cool. Now hit the bell, that should reboot the shop or whatever, and my facial plan. I would have berated him, but I had to admire his amazing virtual mustache. I had hit level 12 while completing the mission, at which point Lorelei had yet another important task for me to deal with, this time on an errand to get her some tasty burgers. Priority 1 directive, deliver burgers to Malawan Captain Archer Rowe. I spawned a burger bot, more evidence that automation is the biggest threat to job security in this modern era, and hit level 13 in the process. Yes, it was that fast. Real quick turnover on that leveling. Around this time, I started to question why I was still using my squirt gun, so I switched to a Torg weapon because explosions. I killed Archer Row, not because I was mad at Malawan, but because of that stupid name, and became Borderlands' most successful electrician. Oh, your wires aren't connected? Oh, it's fine, just uh, throw some water on them. Yeah, that works. I got a quest from Moxie, so obviously I was going to take care of that next. 
that took me to Lectra City to meet Kilovolt. I chatted up Moxie for an extended period of time. Well, actually, she did the majority of the talking. I just kind of sat there and tried to figure out if my new grenades did anything. I miss my butt stallion grenades so much. This is the only game where you can say that and have it make sense, really. The more Kilowatt talked, however, the more I needed to kill him. I'm talking sex stuff! <sighs> Lectra City is basically a non-stop shooting gallery with endless amounts of enemies that continually pummel you. And yes, they did get me a few times, quickly taking me out of my Iron Bear and then putting me directly into Fight for Your Life mode. For the record, I did not. I ran into more enforcers and cursed their complete damage mitigating shields before whipping out my old shotgun trick of making people go way up into the air from my amusement. But the game ultimately rewarded me when it led me to level 14. My perseverance had finally paid off, and it was time to deal with Kilovolt. Moxie's plan went into place, and I shut down his shield. This would be a cakewalk, I thought. I was wrong. In fact, he still has a very good shield, and he also has one of those enforcer shields I hate. Even jumping into my Iron Bear didn't seem to help. After dying a couple times, I came up with a new strategy. Running away. Yes, there's no shame in running away when a challenge is too difficult, I said to myself. This would have to be something that I came back to much later in the game, when it wasn't so frustrating and maybe when I could take down shields more effectively. I hit level 15, picking on enemies more my size, and utilizing Torg's new Sticky Bomb mode. This next part of the game asked me to go on a couple rescue missions. One was to save Tumor Head's, pretty sure that wasn't her given name, girlfriend. The other was to free this man of questionable repute from a porta potty. Anyone who is even remotely familiar with Borderlands will already know that both of these rescue missions went very badly. Even worse yet, it turned out that the Atlas soldier that I was saving was actually one of the last remaining members of the Katagawa clan. I didn't actually know why that was an issue yet, because I hadn't reached that point in the story where it was relevant. But she did give me a pretty nice sniper rifle for my trouble. No offense, but I hope I never see you again. Seriously. I made a pit stop back to Sanctuary 3, where Tannis had me collect hypodermic needles. You have to be careful where you find those lying around. They can be used for almost anything, like darts or infectious diseases. I checked on Claptrap and his Bride of Frankenstein bot that he was building, and smiled as he clinged to his futile optimism that this would work out well. Before heading back to my mission, I got myself a nice shield that I liked over at Crazy Earl's, finally using some of that sweet, sweet iridium that I've been saving up. Finally back on my main mission, I discovered who my Atlas operative was, and it's Zero, the assassin who speaks exclusively in haikus. Hello, Vault Hunter. Let's ruin Malawan's day. Our mission begins. After clearing out the Malawan troops, Zero gave me a cool sniper rifle, and I made it up to him Thank by you. giving him an upgrade to his sweet, sweet sword. Monomolecular edge. Translation, cool sword. I then got a first-hand account as to why the name Katagawa was so forboten. Did you know that he's kind of a douche and he runs Malawan? I didn't, but I do now. Zero then decided not to help me as I went to battle Gigamind. However, he was no match for my butt stallion bombs, which I had decided to go back to because, screw it, no bomb mod that I had found worked as cool as this. Not well, but cool. Overall, this fight was not particularly difficult, but I decided to make this a little faster by getting into that giant mech I keep forgetting I have available. That worked very well, as Auto Bear was able to help me finish him off once and for all at which point he loot exploded all over the place. Don't worry, Gigmind. Happens to everybody. And my inventory was full. Reese finally got his brain. I mean, not his brain, but Gigamind's brain. And yet he didn't get anything from me. And yet again, I did not get an autograph. This was horribly disappointing. Reese, out! I tried taking it up to him directly after I found 
the level exit to Atlas headquarters, but for some reason, I can't go there yet. Again, horribly disappointed. So I went to help a scientist mind control knobs, probably better you don't ask, at which point I hit level 16. Alright, five more levels down, only... I have no idea how many more to go.